Hello, hello, and welcome to Quests and Chaos. I'm your guide today, James Aaron O. And joining me are some wonderful people, but before we get to those wonderful people, we have some announcements to get through. We got some other friends of the show. We're gonna give a shout out to Possum Creek Games. They were so kind to let us use some of the art from Wander Home, so we just wanna give a shout out to a couple of their products. First of all, is Yaziba's Bed and Breakfast is a, um, Wow, what did I type there? <laughs> it's a queer found family RPG, Slice of Life. There we go, that's what my acronym was. Slice of Life queer found family RPG where you play as one of the bed and breakfasts, long-term residents or guests. You can check it out if you're into cups of tea, rainy afternoons, and overcoming mountains of laundry. If those are your vibes, check it out in the link below. Their second product, yes, they got two products going on right now. And the second product is a double header. It is Grand Guignol and Harvest. They are two RPGs, both on backer kit right now. Grand Guignol is a classic Victorian romance horror in the realm of Frankenstein, Carmilla, and Dr. Jekyll and Hyde. Where Harvest is a folk horror off the coast of England inspired by Midsommar and the Wicker Man. If you're interested with though interested in those as well as Yaziba's bed and breakfast, check it out below. And hey, do you want to start off your campaign in a memorable way? Then please check out our friends at Violet Daisy Games and their latest book, You Don't Meet in a Tavern. From pottery shops to sh shipwrecks, you are sure to find something that kicks your adventures off right. I may have been inspired by one of them tonight. Their, crowd, their crowdfunding campaign begins on November 21st, so if you are interested, also check it out in the link below. Now, that is our friends outside of the studio, but we have some friends within the studio, and we're gonna introduce them now. Let's pass it on over to here. Hi, I'm Sam Tillis. I use he, him pronouns. I don't know if I'm supposed to say anything beyond that, so I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm Cal Garrett. I use they, them pronouns. I'm Greg Corbin, I use he, him pronouns. I'm Lou Moana, I use she, her pronouns. Fantastic. And with that introductions, we will now get into the intro animation of Wander Home. Uh, and they are sort of vaguely Victorian um, or Edwardian. Uh, they've got like a, um, a satchel of books, a waistcoat, um, some cycling trousers, 
uh, and big glasses, dangly earrings, etc. Fantastic. And Grant, who are you playing today? Mm -mm. So I get my little tag back in here. So I'm playing Lobo Flynn, a guardian wolf, who also has a little ward, titled Bobcat, named Alex. It was by a she. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. Anna Lou? I am playing Chadwick, the dancer fox. And uh, he is a, a he, him, standard red fox with um, some kind of fancy adornments, some uh, red and blue kind of velvety feeling um, attire. Um, I carry around a wicker basket full of costumes, so you'll never know when I might just bust out one of those costumes just to be a little uh, quirky. <laughs> I have bandage wrapped feet and a gleam in my eye. <laughs> So those are our wanderers, but as part of the system of Wander Home, each one of those playbooks, if you will, the pilgrim, the teacher, the guardian, and the dancer, they ask the players to ask the other players questions to help build ties. So Trav Matthias, what are your two questions and to whom are they sent to? Uh, I'm gonna ask uh, you, uh, and what I'm gonna ask you, Chadwick, is, um, does our faith still fill your heart with hope? Yes, I am a very optimistic creature. I uh, believe that uh, wherever we're going, uh, wherever our end uh, uh, destination ends up being, we will be happy, we have each other, and there will be dancing. It is imperative. Nice. We will be happy, there will be dancing as well, <laughs> right down. Uh, and what I'd like to ask you mm -hmm. is, um, how did you save me when my inexperience tripped me up? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I, you were collecting some herbs and you were going to eat something that was poisonous to you. Mm. Um, and I stopped you from doing that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. <laughs> Fantastic. And Professor Basil, your two questions. Um, well, let me write this down really quick. Okay, uh, my two questions. The first is directed towards Trav. What have you shown me about the world? Mm. I have shown you that each place is a place, but also each place is a stopping point on the way to somewhere out else. So you can think of a place as existing in and of itself, but also as a network of lines leading to further and further away. I like that. Okay. Um, <clears throat> How do you reassure me when I'm at my wit's end? Well, I'm a very laid back person, so it creates kind of a weird, like, illusion of optimism. But the idea that I'm the kind of person that tries to find, like, there's really nothing to stress about. Like, these are all just moments that just kind of come and go. And if you let go of those harder moments that kind of just weigh you down, I think you can focus on the better moments that could come in the future. And Lobo, your two questions. Professor Basil. Mm -hmm. Why does my ward look up to you and why does that bother me? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I taught them a very annoying song and they uh, really enjoy singing that song <laughs> to annoy you. It's kind of an inside joke that yeah. we have. <laughs> Trying to test my seemingly endless patience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, Chadwick, what was I like before I found my award? Mm -hmm. You were more stringent and uh, military-like before you found your award, and you're, you still do have that uh, that 
presence, that strong presence, but your ward kind of softened you up a little bit and made you a little bit um, more optimistic, more uh, go with the flow as opposed to so uh, hard-hearted. Cool. <laughs> Excellent. And Chadwick, your two questions, please. All right. Trav Matthias. Uh, why won't you ever dance with me? Oh. Oh. Um, because it physically hurts me too much. But I have not told you that. Mm. And Lobo. Yes. Why do I call you my best friend? I think the reason you consider me your best friend is because I'm a very open-hearted individual and I'm very much a person who believes in showing compassion and basically just trying to give that loving energy to everyone. Someone that shows like, I'm there to protect, you know, to help when you need it. I'm there to protect you when you need protecting. And that I try, but at the same time, I I think that is mostly just like that military background, but like trying to find something that, making that something a little more peaceful out of it and trying to generally use it to help those who need it. Fantastic. Well, with that, we now have our players within our little story here. And our story begins in the land of hate, a land filled with legends like the hero that drew the heaven's blade and slew the slobbering god, the lightning dancers that streak across the sky, or even the fish-headed demons who stalk the crossing paths where the river flows. But this is just the place. Our story is about wanderers. For the land of Haith, while it is in a bit more of a softer, kinder time period, before that it was not so. But the people of this land have been learning, have chose to be more open-minded, more open-hearted, but they are not naive. So, as you four are riding, well, excuse me, five, I forgot about Alex. <laughs> as you five are riding in this cart, pulled by gigantic rhinoceros beetle. Anyone have a name for this rhinoceros beetle? Daryl. <laughs> Daryl it is. And that takes the name off of a different character. Oh, there could be multiple Daryls in the world. As Daryl slowly plods along, quite the elderly looking rhinoceros beetle pulls your cart into an orange expanse. You emerge out of the woods and you see almost as if it were cut off a full plain of desert, but not sand desert, more like the Grand Canyon kind of desert, more rocky, more barren shrubs here and there. And as you were pulled along by Daryl, you slowly approach, as you can see off in that hazy horizon, the atmospheric haze, just providing you with a bit of an obscurity to your vision. You eventually make it to a place where you see a bunch of small, well, some a bit ramshackle, some a bit more put together, buildings along the cliff's edge. You see striding out over this cliff, side, multiple docks, platforms that reach out into this massive expanse outward. And you can see on the side a sign that says Riverside, but crossed out the river. And then it scrolled in a little bit of a hasty paint cliff as opposed to river, turning this town that you have now approached into cliffside. You see folks, a few of them scattered about, but it seems a little desolate even by its barren nature. Daryl pulls up and you hear the old rhinoceros beetle give a little <laughs> Settles in as the cart stops. 
and you find yourself here in the town of Cliffside. Oh dear, um, what, what do you what do you think happened to their um their river? I can't say that I know. I'd have to look around a bit first. I, I, uh, you, you, you know, mammal types uh, don't appreciate perhaps the the, the, the sheer uh, watery joy that a, a river uh, can bring. But uh, I, I wonder, I wonder if they're a, a, a dour folk having lost their um, their flowing water here. Um, Oh, well, maybe, maybe I'm just unnecessarily worried about things. Maybe, maybe everything's going to be fine. Well, clearly water is important to all manner of creatures. I think the bigger question is how long has, has it been like this? Clearly it's got, clearly it should have taken some time before it could have become, well, less of a riverside. Hmm. Sure. And as you all are remarking and regarding what is Cliffside now, you see a hunched figure slowly start to approach. They are pink in hue with their frills pointing out bright red, but they're a bit more flopped down. You see a wide mouth stretch across their amphibian face, and you see a little old axolotl approach <laughs> slowly. Uh, they've got a shawl over their shoulders and a cane that they grip with their little um, axolotl hands. <laughs> 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 and they approach you as like, ah, well, welcome. It's been a while since we've had uh, some visitors to Rivers, uh, excuse me, uh, Cliffside. What brings you here? Ooh, it looks like a new friend. Well, first, can we answer your question with a, a question? What happened to this place? Oh, well, it's an interesting story. You see, there is a possum from, from, our, from our town and he, well, during the before times, he, uh, he saw that we were in such a lack. And so he approached the river nearby and he asked the, the great fish demon within the, the river to give him, well, well, actually, I think the wording was more like, please save this place from the coming hordes of the king of the floating mountain. And the fish demon rose up and was like, you want me to save this place? And the possum said, yes, yes, please. And so the demon said, well, I will save this place. And sunk the waters deep down below and save the river. But not our town. You know, <laughs> wording sometimes is a very tricky thing when you are approaching uh, those with great power. <laughs> Sounds like quite an insidious demon of the sea, of this river. Well, we are passing through on our way to our collective home. Ah, yes. That's a great segue into a quick interlude that I forgot to say. At the beginning of every Wander Home game, you're supposed to ask four questions. Yay! First of all, as a group, what sort of place did you all just travel from? Mm. A green place. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very verdant, overgrown. What do you all think? I do think overgrown would be the way to describe it. I mean, I feel like it might have remnants of the society before things changed. Mm. And kind of grew around it. Ruins, perhaps. Is it recent ruins or from days long before the Crusades of the King of the Floating Mountain? Very old, very, very old. Uh, old and the ruins had memories and we could almost hear the memories echoing through the ruins as we passed through them. 
Excellent. Second question. Do we feel our journey has been long? Oh, let's go for it. <laughs> We're about a day's out from these ruins, so um, coming back from the ruins, we uh, it would be considered a short journey from that point. Uh, but prior to that, when we all came from our original homes, that would be a little bit of a longer journey from that point until when we all met. I think given that you, Chadwick and Lobo, have known each other before <laughs> Alex, that would make a lot of sense. Yeah. That our journey together has been long. Mm -hmm. And then the next question, is there somewhere you hope to go? Oh yes, um, at least there's somewhere that Trav Matthias F hopes to go. He's hinted at it to the rest of you, but I don't know if he's explicitly talked about it. I know I'd like something very quiet, peaceful. Something where I can enjoy the rest of my days and raise my ward so they can experience something that maybe I haven't experienced as much of, to give them something happy too. And then the last question that is asked, but is answered silently for each player within themselves. Where is my home? And as you all ruminate on that, we will get back into it. As the Axolotl old mayor looks at you all, it's like, oh, well, I'm glad you all have found yourselves here at River Cliffside. <laughs> Still getting used to that name. Um, well, welcome. You happen to find us on a day of festivities, so it will be a grand day for for you all to be joining us here. <laughs> what What is your name? Sorry. Ah, yes. My my name is Jude. Hey, Jude. <laughs> hey. <laughs> Uh, what are the festivities today? Are we here on a festival day? Yes, well, it is our Remembrance Day. It's, oh. a, it's a day where we think and praise those who came before. And we, if we have our ways of celebrating here at River Cliffside, we, we've changed it up a little bit. It's, a, it's going to be a grand time. <laughs> I, um, I look forward to engaging in uh, whatever local uh, traditions are involved with um, Remembrance Day. Uh, Jude, Yes. thank you for welcoming us uh, to this place. Please, please come and enjoy yourselves. Um, I believe the, uh, the pottery making portion of the day will begin soon and you can find Maeve and her workshop over there. I'm sure you can all find ways to uh, engage in the remembrance that uh, you two likely had people in your past. I wonder if they remember the river. That's part of the ceremony. Oh! <laughs> Yes, well, I mean, we had the river not like... Hey, Daryl, how many years has the river been gone? <laughs> and you see over on the side a possum. <gasps> it's the possum! <laughs> Who's about, uh, we'll, we'll give him middle-aged, about 40-ish. He's just like, oh, well, uh, I think the river's been gone for 10, 10, 10 12 years now. Oh, well, yes, well, there you go, there you have it, <laughs> 10, 12 years. <laughs> Isn't it astonishing in this day and age how common the name Daryl is? <laughs> yes, indeed, uh, absolutely. Does our, our rhinoceros beetle react to that? <laughs> 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 and you just hear a low grumbling. <laughs> don't, don't worry, mate, you're our one and only Daryl. <laughs> Gives you a bit of a horn bop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd certainly like to check out that pottery and uh, learn something new. Uh, Lobo, if I if I might have a word with you uh, before we before we go. Of course. Um, what do you do on a remembrance day? Do you think uh, when there are things that you don't want to remember?
It's hard to pass those thoughts. We all have them, and all of them tend to linger about more than others. Best thing you can do is try and find the good ones, though. So there's always something that might bring more of a smile than a tear. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll, I'll try. Maybe there will be some wooden instruments we can buy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be lovely? Mm -hmm. And you all begin to weave your way into Cliff's side, and you can start to see where the remnants of Riverside were. You can see the just sheer drop, if you will, that just tips on over where the docks stretch outwards. And before you, the Grand Canyon is a very apt word. Mm -hmm. It is a large expanse outwards. And as you look over the edge, the atmospheric haze now parting way as you've gotten closer, you can see down deep, deep below in this month of fire top, the trees down there are fiery red. So as if you are seeing a giant river of leaves that stretch outwards into a blazing, f flaming river, <coughs> metaphorically, of course. But as you pass by, there are folks who, it, in terms of the remembrance, it seems there are some folks who are a bit more dour and more in their grieving stages. And then for some folks, the remembrance seems to be a bit more of a joyous celebration in which they choose to remember the great lives that the person or persons had lived. Doesn't seem like they discriminate in terms of how one celebrates. But as you weave through these ramshackle little houses, you do see some a small child weaving through the way with a little bit of a wooden flute just going <laughs> Oh my, youngster, you are quite the instrumentalist. Might I ask, how long have you been playing this flute? And then they show you three fingers. Oh my, three years. That, <laughs> three, th three months. <laughs> three weeks. My child, three days. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, then you are really quite the instrumentalist in that case. You know, I am a uh, bit of a uh, performer myself. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you could play and I could show you a dance. And the child begins to play. It's very stilted and halting, and they're just tapping where <laughs> it feels right to them, and they play their kind of heart song. Mm -hmm. um, what kind of dance comes out of Chadwick? Yes, I do a, a nice jig to this song, <laughs> and I invite Trav to uh, come dance with me. Come, come. Yeah, Trav Matthias is maybe a couple steps back and sort of <laughs> leaning on his staff pretty heavily, his, his uh, coat kind of hanging down, and he'll just kind of wave a hand and <laughs> say, oh, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no, I'm, I'm, uh, oh, I'm perfectly fine over here, thank you. Oh, Trav Matthias, every time, every time, come on. Uh, Lowell, you, why don't you show him how it's done? I'll give it a try. <laughs> so, Alex, now begins the first lesson showing how to dance. <laughs> and you're awarded this tiny little bobcat with this big floppy cap that covers about half of their face. They look up at you and very quiet and to themselves, individual Alex's, but you see them kind of like hop to one side, one mm -hmm. left side, mm -hmm. observes Chadwick and like expands their arms out in similar fashions, if a bit delayed and tries to follow along. That's the spirit boy. See, Alex has got the right idea. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take out a small drum and just like give them a little bit of a beat. <laughs> mm -hmm. And as you all start to find the rhythm here, it all starts to 
cascade into a small crowd starting to observe and watch and some folks even beginning to dance together with you and you feel uh, Trav Matthias just uh, slightly younger looking hair just kind of pop up next to you with their brown floppy ear going looking and <laughs> hearing the sounds that are emanating like uh, well, uh, old timer, y y y you gonna get in there? Oh, uh, well, I suppose. And like, Trap Matthias will kind of like take a little, like, little step forward with the stick, <laughs> a little step back with the stick, and a little step to the side with the stick, and kind of like new little bob over this way and a little bob over that way, and just a very small, self-contained little dance will come out of him. Uh, just for a few minutes. I'm not sure if any of you even notice if you're all caught up in your own dances. Mm -hmm. uh, Chadwick does not notice. Um, I am kind of in my own world now that I've come into this this dance space, which is my specialty. Um, I do not notice, um, so that adds to the uh, the kind of sensation of oh, Trav doesn't like to dance. Trav doesn't like me, or you know anything oh. like that. <laughs> yeah, just like just like back over your corner, Trav mm -hmm. is doing a little dance, <laughs> and then by the time you turn around, Trav is kind of like <laughs> resting again. I sigh that Trav. <laughs> but as this little performance comes to an end, the folks around give claps, and <laughs> those who dance together give little bows. As the day of remembrance is kicking off to a fun start with these newcomers <laughs> that have arrived. And as you follow Jude's in, uh, offering, you find yourselves closer and closer to the edge of what Cliffside is, a slightly sizable shack. Um, shack, sizable. <laughs> <laughs> slightly sizable shack, and you can just feel the warmth already starting to emanate from it, and you can hear grunts of effort as here it sounds like people are putting in work. I wander inside. Hello there. And as you, is in there. <laughs> as you wander in, there's about three or four people already working the pottery wheels, some of them slapping clay. Um, there's a couple in the back who are uh, already at their finished products, starting to um, paint little uh, depictions of, who knows, perhaps someone that they cared for. But they have a bit of a nice smile on their face, uh, a look of longing, but of also holding that person in love. And as you arrive within, you see a large um, cow mm -hmm. just observing the workshop, seeing who's here and there. And this, you can presume, is Maeve. And she looks all at you and is like, ah, welcome. Yeah, this is, I, I, I was heard that there were newcomers coming in, but I'm surprised that you all came to here. Why, why here? Uh, Jude told us that this is where we should start. Ah, yes, this is a wonderful place to start. Do you, do you all know how we work here in, uh, how it works here in Cliffside? Not at all. Can't say we know. Mm, well, it's a fun one in a way. What we like to do is we, as you can see here, make pottery of uh, different shapes. Some people like to make vases, some just like to make cups. Uh, but then we remember the people that we have lost and paint times that we hold dearest to us on, on those pieces. And when we do, we we fill them up with um, food or drink, and then we take the ships out, and we fly over the ravine and drop it in an offering to them. <laughs> That's a beautiful way of remembering. Yes, it is. <laughs> do, um, do your ships fly now? Yes, yes we do. Uh, I mean, it was only, um, it was a decade ago that we, we, we lost the river, but it's, 
you know, we, we gotta make do what we gotta make do, and we do have, we've found a way to make a scaffolding all the way down, but it is quite a trek down, so we've decided to just outfit our old ships, the, <laughs> the ones that didn't sink straight to the bottom. <laughs> um, we just outfitted them up, and now we, we're, um, sail- sailors of the, of the air. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'd I'd love to make a, a, a cup of some kind. Well, certainly, there's clay over there, paints over there. Please, to your leisure, find what works for you. <laughs> Go grab some clay and attempt to make something. <laughs> attempt to make something. <laughs> Let's see, where is the workshop in the book? <laughs> yeah, because there are certain things that happen when you work at a, a workshop. A rules, even. Mm-hmm, rules <laughs> in this game that really doesn't have many rules. <laughs> uh, but yes, you start to craft this cup. Is there any way you shape this cup to be? Um, I think uh, this is something that Basil has never done before, and it's going to turn out very poorly. Mm -hmm. Um, It's kind of lumpy, and it it will hold something, but it's very lumpy. Um, And I think I'm going to carve a a little uh, fiddlehead fern into it. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. A lumpy, weird clump. And they're not very happy with it, <laughs> but it is what it is. Would you say you uh, worked hard and sweated over your creation? Oh yeah, <laughs> totally. As you work the clay and just really like try to make it work, um, you get a token. I get a token! Yes. Ooh. As folks. Ooh, thank you. Very excellent cut, Thomas. Nice, <laughs> right on the head. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tokens are one of the few mechanics in this game which can help move things a bit forward, if you will, where a character is taking a particular stance on something and want to shift the world somehow. And I have just given Basil, Cal, a token, but you four all have a token already gifted to you by Duke Fleeg. So thank you very much. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Duke. Thank you. Mm-hmm. While we're in the workshop, well, I might not be the most handy. I want to see what Alex can create. Mm-hmm. Might help them out with whatever they have coming in mind. I know they're a little imaginative and a bit more autistic than I am. Yeah. Alex, they take in the surroundings, very wide eyes that are always just absorbing as much as they can. And after hearing the invitation to go get some clay, they just trot over, pull off, for them, a sizable chunk that looks almost <laughs> as big as their head and throws it down and just like starts to work on it. And having seen Alex work, what is some ways that you would describe their way of working? They're a little messy, but they know exactly what it is they want to make. So they have a very keen eye for detail and I think it's the best way to describe it, you know, this. But, you know, look, you know, I'm there trying to help it, you know, help them kind of maintain the shape they're looking for, you know, doing a little. What's this right here, hey? Hi. Right, so we try this then. And you almost see it's. It's a classic vase shape, but the handles themselves look like. fish. <laughs> <laughs> That seem to be just like smooching the tip, or like <laughs> smooching the, uh, the the lip, lip of-, of the vase, mm-hmm. and it comes down, and the fins just flare out, and they they just like, take out their claw and start detailing <laughs> as it comes down, and wow. you can see a depiction of two larger bobcats, you presume, and a smaller one with hands both raised up, and it looks like they're swinging. (laughs) Oh, I love this child so much. (laughs) (sighs) 
I stay kneeled down, I look at the look at the drawing that they made. I pat their head. Mm-hmm. Mom and Dad would love this. I'd be proud of you. And you see a wide smile go over Alex's face. Gives you a nod and starts taking it towards the kiln, which the opening is as su- like is the size of their body. <laughs> you know what? I'm gonna take over. From you. <laughs> Chadwick, anything else or anything you find yourself doing in the workshop here? Um, Chadwick, ever the uh, optimist and jokester, uh, comments on the other pottery uh, first. Um, I love it. I love it. I love it. A true prodigy and yours is amazing. It reminds me of a gruel I had the other day, in the best way possible. It's great. Um, was it at least good gruel? It was delicious. All right. Well, I can live with that, I guess. Now, is it to the, what should I make? Uh, make perhaps, oh, perhaps I would just put my paw into the clay, just make a little, make a little keepsake of my, well, I guess I would put my bottom paw, paw because it would be a, a commemorative uh, piece of my dancing and in remembrance of my first steps of when I first danced. So I put my bottom paw into the clay and then I take it over to the kiln as well. Mm-hmm. Pop it in. <laughs> as these three pieces are going into the kiln, Trav Matthias. Trav Matthias mm-hmm. is going to Look at the clay, uh, various like uh, texture, the clay's up on the wall, look at what everyone else is doing, and we'll say to uh, Basil, I think, um, there's, um, there's not a, a great deal of things that I wish to um, remember, but may I ask um, what, your, what your memory is, the, the fern? Um, I'm curious, I would, I would like to, um, Rather than holding onto my memories, I wonder if I might uh, help you hold on to yours. That's very kind of you. Um, I had a friend. Her name was Fern. And we haven't spoken in a long time. Not for lack of love or distance created by conflict, but just time. So I suppose I'm mourning that friendship. But Fern is still your friend, and because you told me this story, now I get to have a friend named Fern too. Thank you. Of course. Thank you for for your sunshine. And if you'll allow it, I'd like to like help you carry the the lumpy sort of pot <laughs> thing that we share now a little bit to, Absolutely. The, to the kiln. <laughs> Certainly. And all the three pieces are fired up. The paw print, the immaculate vase. <laughs> oh my God, it's <laughs> And the lump. <laughs> they are all slowly fired in the kiln and you all watch for a time as they slowly become a bit more opaque, the translucence, the wet nature of the clay slowly dries up and it begins to harden. Um, my instinct is like perception roll, but that's not this <laughs> one. I would ask, who is probably the least within their memories right now? I'm kind of not within my memories because I'm within someone else's memories. Um, if someone else wants to take it, they can, but I'm in an, um, sort of an imagination of a memory that I don't really have. Mm-hmm. Okay. In that case, Trav, as you enter for a brief moment into Basil's world, imagining who this fern was based on their interactions with them. You look a little over to your left and you see mm, maybe about 25-ish years old, a basset hound. Just really 
scratching his head over his piece and just sm trying to make it into something and then smushes it back down and tries again and you can get that sense that it's just, it's not right for whatever reason. I'll, I'll kind of peel off from the group and go over and just sit down next to the Basset Hand and not even say anything right off the bat, just like see if they want to start talking to me. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and with that almost invitation of just sitting down, you just hear him start to blurt out. It's like, oh, it's not right, it's not right. It's like, <clears throat> come on, come on, just, oh, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's like, just get it up, get it up. And, and you see the clay just slowly start to slow to the side. <laughs> like, mm, oh. It's just not, it's not working, why, why? Why is it not just standing up, just, oh. Why should it, um, why should it be standing up? Because if I, if I don't make a nice thing, then, then how will she know that I, I still think of her? Kind of like take back, take in the sort of like schlumping pile of clay and say, um, is there something wrong with the clay? Yeah, maybe. Maybe there's something wrong with the clay, Maeve. <laughs> Maeve just like, uh, I mean, it was freshly farmed from down below this morning. <laughs> well, it, it, it's not standing up. So if it's not standing up, then then something's clearly wrong with the clay. If Maeve thinks that there's not something wrong with the clay, and kind of like look him up and down. I don't think there's something wrong with you. So maybe the clay doesn't want to stand up. So what are you trying what are you trying to say that that it's supposed it's supposed to be this lump? Kind of look at the clay, look at him again and say Is it supposed to be Anything? I, I mean, it's Remembrance Day, so it's supposed to be something that that I can remember her by. Do you remember her? Yeah, of course. Of course, I remember her. Why? Why? Why would I be making this if I didn't remember her? So the clay does work. And you see this, like the slow realization before it finally clicks. And he just, yeah, he just starts to cry a bit. Yeah. I'll kind of look over to uh, my group and sort of like gesture, a sort of like, come over here, guys. I'll wander over there. Mm-hmm. And yeah, you all see this basset hound who's just starting to cry as some of the tears start to fall into the clay itself. It's not pretty. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> it, it's honestly worse than your lump. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. It, it's okay. Kid, don't don't feel embarrassed. I mean, you should have seen Basil's. I mean, <laughs> really. But no, no, that looks great. Don't cry. Yeah, and he tries to just gather himself and um, thanks. Um, just, I, uh, I, I don't want to do her name wrong, you know? Who are you remembering? My mother. Mm. Passed a couple months ago, so. My name is Trav Matthias. Uh, these are my friends, and by the rules of mathematics, they are now your friends too. <laughs> 
Oh, wow, that's, <laughs> that's a lot of friends. <laughs> Four new friends in one day? I'd say that's an achievement. Uh, well, four friends. Uh, maybe five. You want to, maybe five? Would you want to? Oh, and <laughs> <laughs> oh, I forgot about Alex. <laughs> Alex just kind of peers out and gives a like, looks at the lump, looks up at the basset hound. It's like sometimes. Well, a lump can be pretty. If you look at it, like look at it from this angle, it kind of looks like the cliff sides out the door. I see that, yeah. And if that's one way that your mother saw them, that could be a way for you to see them. And the Basset Hound is just in his feelings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, friends, uh, it's lovely to meet you. <laughs> uh, Did you want to fire it? Sure, sure. And you will help him get it on over to the kiln. And you watch as similar thing happens as the moisture evaporates, it starts to solidify and form. My name's Gary. Nice to meet you, Gary. I'm Basil. Good to meet you, mate. I'm Lobo. Nice to meet you. I'm Chadwick. And Trav Matthias. Yeah. Oh, and Alex. Ah, yes. <laughs> Wise one you got there. <laughs> they're, they're quite perceptive at times. Even more so than me. Well, uh, I think I'm gonna take a step outside. <laughs> Lovely to meet you, Gary. Gary. Good. Yeah. Well, where to next, friends? Well, we could ask Maeve, get some ideas. Sure. Mm, yeah. You walk up to the cow who's currently helping um, another person, like getting through the painting portion of their of their pot. You can see a depiction of. Um, Couple blades stuck in a field. Um, whoever this uh, this owl seems to be a bit more hardened. Um, but Maeve looks up. It's like, oh uh, yes. Uh, is there anything else I can help you with? <laughs> if it wouldn't be too much trouble, I for one would love to see these flying ships. <laughs> oh well. Um. Good. Good thing you've found this. Uh, this man right here, this is a, a f Admiral Snowbeak. <laughs> As you see this white owl just kind of Oh, yes. Hello, uh, Admiral, at your service. <laughs> uh, it's quite a lengthy campaign, but I am here now enjoying my peace. Very good. So you're not a native of Cliffside then? Ah, uh, no, 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 no. Uh, I did come to it in in the Riverside times, but uh, here we are now at a cliffside. I heard it was a uh, branding move. <laughs> sure, sure. Mm -hmm. Throw a, throw a quick glance at the cow to see if the phrase branding brings up any. <laughs> <laughs> you see two of the ears go whoop. <laughs> Old wounds, old wounds. <laughs> <laughs> so Chadwick, you wanted to see those airships? Yes, I, I've always wanted to fly. I mean, oh, oh well, uh, we we plan to take them out at the uh, at the sunset, where we will all drop the potteries and goods down towards the uh, ravine below, and um, that'd be one way you can see, certainly there'll be plenty of ships, but if you wanted a earlier campaign, an earlier excursion, I'm, I'm always one for a brief flight. Mm. Sounds great. What do you guys think? I'm here for your adventure. <laughs> Sounds a little unsteady to me, but we can try it. Unsteady <laughs> within the wings 
of Admiral Snowbeak, I can promise you there will be no smoother flight. You'll come back on the ground and believe that it is shaking, quivering, more than the ship that I commandeer, the Aurora. Ah. Well, that remains to be seen. I'm not doubting your ability to fly a ship, sir. I've just never been in the air before. Sounds a little frightening. Well, that is what we aim to do in our lives. Frighten me? No, facing the things that frighten us. Oh. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Well, I don't know if that's the things that we uh, aim to do in our lives, sir. Uh, um, um, is sir the right admiral? Either way, I'm off duty. <laughs> <laughs> I'll kind of look a glance to Lobo to be like, are we going along with this or do the two of us want to head off somewhere else? I glance down at Alex, kind of <laughs> uncertain. <laughs> you, you look down at Alex and they are puffed up <laughs> just at the <laughs> at the gumption and gusto that Snowbeak provides. <laughs> sure, I'll give the flight a try as well. Very good, and I see that I have a first mate right there. And you see Alice just give a quiet salute. <laughs> And you know the way like youngins do, like the the weight of their arm just kind of like takes them off, off their kilter for a bit. <laughs> yeah, <it's> a <laughs> <laughs> but yes, um, I will go prepare the ship. Uh, it'll take about a few minutes. You can see the preparations, or you're welcome to see what other festivities are out out about town. Sure, festivities. We like festivities. <laughs> Absolutely, yes. I'll, I'll be right behind you all. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Shall we? Of course, one of the local fest... What festivities do you recommend? And as Snowbeak has already been, like, walking to the door, <laughs> just like, oh, mm, yes. Well, are you... Well, we'll get the adventuring sword into you, except for you, you... I already see that gleam in your eye. <laughs> but yes, what would be good for a nice relaxing time before going into the air? <laughs> where's a where's a good place to kind of sit down and take things in? Is there is there a one of those? Oh, oh, well, beyond on the Aurora, that is one way. Uh, but if you actually go to the opposite side of the cliff, I find that someone has put a bench there, probably from Riverside times. And it just didn't fall through and looks over the entire ravine. Oh. The opposite side of the cliff, you say? Well, I mean, opposite side of Riverside. It's oh, I see. Not, a... not down and then oh. up again. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. That's, that's very far away. <laughs> it sounded like I a mean, worry. I mean, I could take you there, but that's a, that's a... I don't know why a person would put a bench there, but if they put a <laughs> bench there, they could see Riverside and see what a... Cliffside. What a wonderful <laughs> town Cliffside is. Well, perhaps we could journey to the bench and on the way find some things to put in our vessels. Mm. Yes. Sounds good. Certainly. Shall we? We shall. We will. I'll lead the way out of the pottery shop and <laughs> say my farewells to Maeve. Oh, I'll make sure that it all comes out nice and clean, and if y'all want to paint it some other time, um, just remember, we just toss them all at the end of the day, so make sure you come back. It's the color of me mine. <laughs> I just realized it's the color of me mine. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you, Maeve. We'll, we'll come back after our sky adventure to paint in the, um, the, the lines and things. Mm. Mm. Uh, as you all make your way through Cliffside, following Admiral Snowbook's directions, is there anything else you particularly pick up for your vessels? Chadwick reaches into his uh, large bag of costumes and uh, inexplicably pulls out what seems to be almost like a, a 
sailing kind of little sailor outfit. <laughs> <laughs> um, and throws it on and is like, I'm ready to see this cliff. <laughs> Chadwick has prepared his entire life for <laughs> <Yes>. this moment. <laughs> oh, um, go. Oh, go ahead. oh, you first. No, 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 please. Oh, we're going. Do you smell that? Something delicious. Something I have never smelled before. As you follow this smell, you wind your way through what does Lobo, who has never seen this before, what does he find? He finds this giant, giant bowl, Almost have cut like a curry, filled with so many spices them, that he has never ever smelled before. It has spicy but sweet at the same time. Mm. Like it burns the nostril, but it, it's pleasing. Mm. There's a meat in there, I can't tell what it is because the spices are so overwhelming. All I know is that it seems very savory. As a savory scent hits your nose, there's a little touch of cinnamon that just hits the tip of your tongue as you're breathing it in. And you see, introduced at the top of the day, Daryl, the possum, just <laughs> scooping, or scooping around at this big pot. Just going at it like, oh, hey, how's it going there, Shutton? Mm -hmm. Now, what's this you're making here? Oh, well, this is my favorite gumbo. <laughs> You know, I don't think I've ever had gumbo before. You've never had gumbo before? I've been more of the, uh, we've come more from the east. I've kind of spent more time there. It's a very uncommon dish. Well, what's a common dish in the east? Unfortunately, nothing quite like this. You know, just plain, you know. Pies. It's <laughs> meat pies, chickens, those sorts of things. Chickens? Dang, okay, well, no meat in here, just some okra and spices and some of the vegetables down in the valley below. What vegetables do you have in the valley below? Oh, well, we've got carrots and I just said okra. We've got um some eggplants. I don't throw those in the gumbo. It has a weird texture, but we got <laughs> eggplants down there. I imagine it might fall apart a little bit in the in the gumbo, the eggplant, because of the texture. It kind of goes. Yeah. I don't know. It just tastes funny to me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't put it in. That's why. Mm -hmm. Which way is he stirring? Oh, he's doing a nice little uh, clockwise formation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you want to try a figure eight? A figure eight? What? This is the way my mammy did it for <laughs> centuries. Well, a figure eight just adds a little bit of magic. Magic. Eastern folk, they over here saying an eight figure eight, like what kind of fancy stuff is that? Sure, I'll have you know, I'm an expert on household magics. Household ma If there's such thing as household magic, it's my mammy's gumbo. Mm -hmm. If I may retort. No insult implied. Did you not talk with a, a daemon about trying to protect your river? <laughs> We're gonna get kicked out <laughs> oh, of town. No. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's true. I was a young possum back then. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> Ten years ago. <laughs> possum years. Possum it's, years. it's been rough out here on Cliffside. <laughs> <laughs> true, true, yeah, no, I made that deal. Well, I was trying to make sure everything was good up in here, but yeah, well, eh, sometimes you make the wrong choice. Well, you try to do what's best for the people. Exactly. Yes. Exactly, but sometimes, uh, well, 
I did get a few years of community service. We're not supposed to be talking to Malzahar, but I just decided it was a good choice. You know, we were really uh, we were really strapped there, and it was a time of turmoil. And well, but as you can see, we make things do. <laughs> well, you've done quite well, if I might say so myself. And if I may. I think we'd like to try some of this magic gumbo of yours. Are you sure? Cause I'm not stirring in a finger. <laughs> I will admit that household magics are different in different places. Good, now you're starting to understand my mammy. <laughs> I'm sure your mommy was an expert as well. Balls out a bowl, starts ladling it up, just passing it out. And there, no transactional money, it's just like he, he gives it to you freely. Ooh. Cheers, mate. Cheers to my mammy. To your mommy? Oh, yes. Is this uh, in remembrance of your mommy? Oh, no, I make this every Tuesday, and then I, it's kind of a meal prep deal. I, I like to save it for the rest of the week. It really, ever since the deal with the demon, I've really been trying to, like, make sure that I gotta get a good sense. It tastes good, doesn't it? Mm. Um, a little peppery. Much more than I thought. <laughs> oh, you Eastern folk have no tone for spices, but you. Oh, I see you're eating it uh, real nice. I, I love it. Mm. What's the secret spice if you don't <laughs> Mammy was always the one to be freely saying the spice because she said it was her magic touch that gave it the flavor. Uh, there was just some cinnamon, some star anise, um, oh, uh, some celery powder. We like to we like to lay out the celery that we found down below, give it a nice dice and chop, and then we uh, we mix it up with some salt and then throw it on in there. It's a good time. It's a good time. But really. It's the clockwise formation, the stirring, that gets it its good flavor. Mmm, mmm, mm-hmm. Mm I see you also serve tea with that gumbo. Oh, no, I didn't serve that tea. <laughs> I'm just sitting here in the shade. <laughs> and how do you feel about this gumbo, Alex? You are quite small. Can you, can you handle it? Just like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. We're gonna find that Alex is the only one of us who's like adjusted and decent and reasonable. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> Trevor Matthias is clearly having a hard time with the gumbo, like he's enjoying it, but like his his skin has changed colors mm -hmm. to a kind of redder hue. Trevor Matthias, are you alright? Oh <laughs> it's, it's it's very good. <laughs> Very good indeed. Could I have seconds? <laughs> you sure about that, boy? <laughs> I am on a journey, and I want to experience everything. Ho oh, ho! You want to experience everything? Man pulls out this little tiny bottle. What's you wouldn't that? mind giving a little uh, mammoth secret sauce? <laughs> In honor of your mother. <laughs> you need to learn a little bit, son. Mammy's my grandma. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, very good. Family tradition. <laughs> I was trapped Matthias with spikes. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, good lord. If you'll excuse me. Oh. Trap Matthias will kind of like out of the building. Very good. <laughs> He's got steam coming out of his. Ear holes. Yeah, that's what Mammy Sauce will do to you. Clear you right out. <clears throat> Very well. Oh no. Mm. <laughs> In more ways than one. Short of a, a spiritual cleansing. <laughs> I get. Yeah. I looked out at Alex. I think we'll uh, spare them the uh, secret sauce. <laughs> you see, like just like a little bit of a side eye from Alex. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else y'all would like to do with Daryl here? Daryl, you were the original one who spoke with this uh, fish river demon, uh, Malzahar. You probably have a lot of old-timey stories, frankly, that, like, could we perhaps hear one? 
Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Let me see here. Um, hmm. There are plenty. Oh. There are plenty of stories. <clears throat> you ever heard of the one about the salmon and the three wishes? I do enjoy that one. Oh, okay. Well, you know that one too. Well, um, maybe out east they have a few different wishes they make, huh? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I want to hear your version of the story. Are you sure? <laughs> I hear my salmon swim upstream, and I don't know if yours swim downstream. <laughs> the beauty of folklore is that it's different everywhere you go. All right. Well, here in Riverside, excuse me, Cliffside, <laughs> <laughs> salmon swim down upstream, excuse me. <laughs> the salmon swim upstream. And this one salmon, a young, young salmon, was just swimming on upstream, getting on, ready to do their salmon business, you know, as salmon do. Unfortunately, in his zeal, he took the wrong fork up a different river, and when he emerged, he found himself at a bit of a lake. And he looked around and was like, oh, well, where, where, were, all the, where are all the salmon ladies? There are no salmon ladies in this lake. That's unfortunate. Well, that's because he took the wrong, wrong fork, you know? But as he continued to swim around, he saw at the very pit of this lake was a big fish. Now, we're not talking about like salmon fish. We're not talking about, uh, I don't know, catfish, big ones like them. No, this one was a, uh, well, it's better, better stated as a demon, you know, the big demon fish, you know. Anyway, well, as fish demons are known to do, they offer wishes. Mm-hmm, they grant things because they got power. And this salmon came up to this big fish demon and the fish demon's like, oh, hey, son, what you want? What you want? What you need? Why are you here? And, well, the fish was like, well, I'm trying to get to this other lake with all the other salmon ladies, you know? Because that's where I'm trying to get to, but, well, I, I, I lost my way. How do I get there? And the big fish demon was like, oh, I'll give you some wishes. I'll give you three. Why not? How about three? Oh, and the fish salmon was like, okay, well, uh, the first one was, um, oh, what was the first wish? I think he really wanted to be like a really ripped salmon, you know, just really, really muscular so he could impress the f salmon ladies. Um, uh, and then there was a second one. Uh, the second wish was, uh, oh, he wanted a, he wanted a nice pearl to give one of them salmon ladies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then the third wish was, third wish, I think it was something about being able, well, that, that kind of gets into the muscular part. <laughs> um, I mean, he probably wanted like, I don't know, some really nice looking scales, you know, to match the, match the musculars. Anyway, he got all three wishes and he started swimming back downstream. And you know what happened to that salmon? He got yoinked right out of the river because he was muscular, he was shiny, and he got this pearl in his mouth, and then the bear that ate him was like, oh, wow, that's a good-looking salmon. I ate him. Is that a story you were looking for? <laughs> well told. That was a very good lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't need to be all shiny and purdy. Sometimes you just gotta make sure you're in the right place at the right time. Or you might be in the wrong place in the wrong time. Indeed. Say also maybe nothing wrong with being who you are. No, no, sir. Sometimes you just gotta swim. Mm -hmm. And I think the other moral of the story is not to ask fish demons for things. You know, when I heard that one, I thought that salmon was real smart. Mm. I'm the salmon, mm. but no longer. 
Now I'm just Daryl who makes some of Mammy's best gumbo. And excellent gumbo it is. Thank you so much. Well, y'all get on out there to the rest of the festival. You don't want to be sitting here with Daryl. He prepares Mommy's gumbo. He's just going to toss it right on over in the ravine. But I'm glad y'all shared it with me. Glad you could, too. I'd like to see if I can find um, a small roll of bread and some honey. Uh, just in general, right? Just in general, to put in my in my vessel. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You see a you see a brown bear. <clears throat> She's got a nice little stand set up with some of her honey that she uh, farms a little further in towards the cliffside. But yeah, she she just helps you out with it, love. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and I will put it in my pouch for later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Anything else? Anyone else want to get? I want to find some paints. You want to find some paints? Um. I mean, there was plenty at the at Maeve's sh shop. Well, ki what kind of paint is it, though? Oil, acrylic? Um, it's made from shelves. From down below in the ravine. Interesting. I think when we come back around, I might grab some there. Okay. Chadwick, anything? I want a balloon. A balloon? Oh, man. <clears throat> well, you see that little the flute child <laughs> has now grown old of the flute and they're running around with three balloons just like <laughs> running around. They've got a red one and they got a green one and they got a yellow one. And they just run and stream past you. <gasps> Wait, a sweet child. <laughs> it, was, it was I from before. I enjoyed your three days playing uh, experience. Uh, might I have one of those balloons up? Uh, <laughs> might I have, might I have yellow? The child looks at the three balloons that they got. They look at you. They look back at the balloons. And they kind of just post up against the wall <laughs> and be like, gives you a shrug that indicates how much, for what? I see, I see, I must do uh, some sort of task. Uh, ooh, what if what if I procured something for you in return? Their eyebrow raises. <laughs> what is a young child's greatest desire? Child looks you up and down. <laughs> they see the steel drama on your head. <laughs> raises both eyebrows. Oh, uh, can I perhaps play you a, uh, a tune on my steel drum? Hmm. <laughs> oh, uh, you can't possibly uh, want to keep it. it this is actually a, a, a great uh, heirloom that I possess here. Uh, no, 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 perhaps, uh, uh, what if I could find you, uh, I don't know, uh, some grapes or something of that nature. Children like grapes, don't they? You see the child just give the bet like, okay. Slowly starts to walk away with the balloons. I actually got a question for you. So you like drums, do you? Gives a bit of a head nod. <laughs> Is there one in this town maybe you really like? The eye flashes towards the one <laughs> <laughs> Elsewhere maybe from the, in the town? <laughs> Gives you one more look. Can I play it? Sure, I, I mean, as long as you're very uh, gentle to not uh, upset this this wonderful heirloom. Uh, okay. I, I, suppose, I suppose there could be no harm in some uh, gentle uh, rap -a tap Passes you the balloons to hold. Ooh. Taps, taps. Taps, taps, taps. Tap, 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 taps. Tap, 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 tap. Okay. That was that was wonderful, young child. What is her name? Can I have my balloons back? Oh. 
Yes, uh, might I still have one per our agreement? You can have the green one. Oh, okay. Oh, green works for me. <laughs> green works. Okay. Matches my, my cloak here. <laughs> Passes it off. I like my flute better. Runs off. Naruto <laughs> run. <laughs> 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 Balloon acquired. <laughs> I looked down at Alex. I think I got lucky. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is posted up on your leg, being like, yeah. <laughs> 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 Meanwhile, Trav Matthias will, will return from out uh, from behind the uh, Daryl's uh, shack hut, whatever it was. Uh, now a couple shades paler than his. <laughs> color oh, dear. Uh, and we'll kind of like make his way out slowly to match up with the nice rest of the group who'll look up. Well, that's a nice balloon that you have. Thank you. I, I think I want it. Oh, that's very nice. Um, did, uh, did, did Daryl have anything interesting to say after I left? He shared his uh, were you there for the story? I can't remember. Well, I was outside the wall. Did uh, you hear the story? Uh, I heard I heard something about a fish and uh, a bear, and it seemed very bleak um, <laughs> from the, the every other word that I was mm-hmm. hearing. Mm-hmm. That's that's about it. I, yeah. I think I think the moral was uh, uh, if you are lusting after fish ladies, you should maybe <laughs> stop doing that. But uh, mm-hmm. maybe I missed the point. I think the moral was don't make deals with the fish demons. Oh. Oh. I guess that makes sense. (laughs) I tie the balloon around my neck so I don't have to hold it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) Smart. Folks, do you head towards the bench at any point? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's next on our to-do list. Yeah, as soon as Trav Matthias rejoins our group. Mm Now, as you weave your way through, you get to see the full expanse of the ravine going down again, fire top, all the trees down below. They have that orange, yellow, and red just flowing through. While you can't see any of the water down there, with how lush the trees are down there, you can assume that Malzahar, that fish demon, took quite a bit of a dread end to the bottom there. But you find the bench that uh, Admiral Snowbeak pointed out. And do you all sit? Um, Matthias, would you like to sit? I will will certainly sit. Trav Matthias will sit and try to make sure that there's room on the bench for as many people as possible, even if that means that he's kind of like squidged onto the edge. (laughs) If anyone would like to, I've described part of the ravine, but does anyone else see anything else interesting out there? I think the thing that I noticed about it is that a little purple haze that comes from the sunset. It goes from being this fiery river down below, something almost painterly. The idea of seeing almost like a like a color wheel. Well, it goes from that old, little orange to that little purple back to the orange again. There's that little bit of light. It's almost like reflecting shards of glass throughout the entire sky. I know that while the stars aren't visible yet, it's interesting seeing just a little clip of the moon up in the sky getting ready to make its way down. It's calming. Mm. It's... It's almost like there's nothing else there in the world. It's just you, the earth, that little sound of a breeze flying by. Quietest whisper. Almost like his family talking back to you again. As this whisper of a wind weaves its way between your ears, 
gaze out, feeling the last bit of warmth as the sun slowly starts to set. You can see folks beginning to wait, make their way towards airships. And that's where we're gonna take our break. <laughs> Thank you all so much for joining us. We'll be right back. Thank you again to Duke Fleek for giving us the bits for our players here. And we will see you all right after the break. And welcome back. Hope you had a wonderful break, as did we. <laughs> so, you all saw this beautiful expanse. The oranges and the purples beginning to glide down into the ravine. The whisper of the wind hinting at people long past. You make your way back to where Admiral Snowbeak would be. Yes. Before we go, um, I want to leave near the bench a small um, piece of the bread and a little bit of honey uh, as an offering to the bench. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I would say as you leave that there, <clears throat> who is the mo who who of y'all feel like is spiritually connected to the universe, to the world? I definitely have a faith. Um, it's it's one that is mostly self-created, but I think Trav Matthias feels a connection to the to the world around him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think as the rest walk away, you look back and you can just see a small spirit grabbing onto the piece of bread, looks over towards Basil, gives a nod before the spirit and the bread itself kind of just fade off. I'll, I'll say a small prayer, which is a thing that my character sheet says that I should do from time to time. Uh, <laughs> and I'll say, uh, this is in thanks for the world that was, and as a f glimmer of the world that is to be. And as you all begin to make your way along the ridge once more, you find the dock. It's not hard to find which one's the Aurora. <laughs> some of these are more ramshackle ships, some just fishing boats that have now been outfitted with a large balloon on top. <laughs> but the Aurora, oh, Aurora. <laughs> Stark white gleams across the darkening atmosphere, its bow slowly shifting with the weight of itself. But it's not like a creaking ship. It's more of like a husky <laughs> boat. <laughs> I'm sensing a, a lot husky of boat. masculine energy on this. <laughs> the boat itself, very masculine. <laughs> the boat itself has just a lot of heft to it has a sturdy bearing. It doesn't creak because that is just boards and parts of the ship shifting. It bellows that it exists. Ah. It wants you to know that she is here. <laughs> but standing atop, striding as if it were 20 years ago during the campaigns, mm -hmm. Admiral Snowbeak looks down at you five. <laughs> well! Are you prepared to have the adventure of a lifetime? <sighs> oh. <laughs> yes. Uh, Basil looks deeply <laughs> concerned. <laughs> Do not worry, Aurora, right here. She, again, only moves when she wishes to move. <laughs> Creaks only when she wishes to creak. You will never find sturdier purchase on land, on vehicle, on water, even in the air. This is the sturdiest thing you will stand on for the rest of your days. <laughs> Do you think we'll make it? I don't know. Honestly. 
I know how they work, but it's so big. How does it? I mean, I know how, but it's so big. It's a very large boat, very intentful boat. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, lead the way, and uh, I'll follow. Okay. I will tentatively <laughs> step onto the boat. <laughs> I'm uh, assuming that we also retrieved our pottery. Yes. So I will, yeah. in with my pottery, my weird lump in hand, mm-hmm. I will step onto the boat. And in the sense of grabbing the pottery, is there any additional designs that you added beyond the sculpting? Mm. I think um, I would, again, my uh, artistic skills are not excellent, but I would have tried to draw some uh, books with paint. Um, and uh, there is a green uh, book with uh, yellow lettering that says um, uh, the shield book of fairy tales on the front there, and along with the fern. <laughs> Anything added to Alex's? <sighs> and we paint. I think we gave it some paints to kind of give it the land a little more life. You know, the nice green fields, the little towns, the buildings kind of around it. Um, and also kind of the colors of, you know, Alex with their uh, dirty blonde hair or fur. <laughs> uh, very close to another one. I don't know why I'm sounding like Stephen Merchant all of a sudden. Um, and then kind of a, a black and white, uh, the other one that's holding their hand. Accent's coming from. Um, <laughs> Go with is it. a black and white, you know, fur as well. Something that clearly get a little bit of better look at their parents. Mm-hmm. And Chadwick, anything that you add to your paw? I have painted the paw a nice green color, and on the um, outside circular part of the clay, um, outside of the paw, um, I've just kind of I've uh, colored that uh, blue, and I've added just little kind of little designs that look like stars. I'm being very childlike with my um, painting and making it very colorful and nice and happy. (laughs) (laughs) And Trav, did you add anything in any way? I think, um, I think Trav Matthias was kind of around as everyone was adding to theirs. um, And just like, didn't 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 add anything to their like to their art, but like just occasionally would like dip his 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 little little newt finger into the into the paints and just like add some of the paint <laughs> that they had touched onto himself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay, as you adorn yourself and your pottery with this paint, you all slowly begin to make your way onto the aurora. Step, step, step. The gangplank itself. Wobbly. Mm. Oh no. As you can see down deep into the ravine, about 70 feet down oh. to the nearest yeah. portion, aye, aye. where the ravine itself stretches further out below you and is even deepened further. Whoa, no, no, I'm just no. Holding Alex on my shoulders, just trying to keep them from, like, in a st- st- you know, steady and secure. <laughs> and they. They hold the pot in their hands, but it's just very mm-hmm. ready to join the Admiral <laughs> on the campaign. Just <laughs> undeterred. God, I love this child so much. <laughs> Alex is the best of us. I think Trav has one hand on his walking stick and another hand, like, both supporting and being supported by uh, Basil. Yeah, I feel that camaraderie in it. it it reassures me. I'm looking over at Chadwick. So any, uh, any advice for someone who's not quite as uh, sure-footed as you? Well, all I'm thinking is, let's get this show on the road, you land lovers. But just maybe try not to look down until you drop your pottery. Good advice. <laughs> <laughs> and you feel it first, Chadwick, as you have been the first to land on the Aurora. The moment you place both feet on, 
completely still, sturdy, held firm. <laughs> the Aurora knows who she is. And you all feel the same feeling as you stand on. Snowbeak was not lying. This is the sturdiest you have ever felt standing up. Oh, good boat, good boat. <laughs> Very good boat. Wow. Doom. <laughs> Alex just stands there. <laughs> it's almost unsettling how, how still this boat is. I'm, I'm so used to being in constant motion. Uh, maybe, maybe you guys were right, maybe we should, you know. <laughs> Perhaps you can provide the motion. Oh, maybe a boat jig? <laughs> <laughs> I'll take out my drum and start to um, beat out a, a little rhythm. Beat out a little rhythm, and Chadwick, what's the kind of dance that you pull out? A nice jaunty jig as the Aurora is unmoored from her port of call and begins to float ever towards this now turning into a purple river of leaves that gave the sense of warmth before in the sun, but now it just gives that calm feeling of temperance as you move through the nightening sky over the ravine you see other ships begin to follow a couple of others who have already made their way out and as you go the night has fallen and that atmospheric haze is kind of lifted away as the air begins to cool and you look down and you see very likely where the demon Malzahar lives. You can see as you get closer towards the center of this river, the purple seems to have a bit more of an iridescent glow as darkness falls. And just outlined by that purple glow, you can see floating in the air, not fully up above the lip of the ravine, but just floating stones as they seem to be floating around a swirling pool of water. Do uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Admiral uh, Snowbeak, do people still, um, do people still go to the Demon Mazahar? Ho, ho, ho. I think they all learned their lesson after Daryl. Um, oh, some folk do, just for conversation. Apparently he can be a bit of a chatty one. <laughs> I haven't chatted with him before myself, knowing that the conversation would... I don't know where I was going with that. <laughs> <laughs> but I can say it would be a legendary conversation. What if we tried to converse with this Malzahar? Certainly an option, and it sounds like one with adventure. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Do you scoff at the name adventure, Professor Basil? I don't scoff at the name of adventure, merely the folly that speaking to a fish demon typically leads to. Well, I'm sure you've heard the stories. One of my favorite ones happens to be a local tale about a salmon. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Daryl regaled us with that tale earlier. Yes, and he also fell to the folly of the demon. If so, he said and claimed, yes. So what is that lesson for us? Don't speak to fish demons. And don't look down. Well, I've already committed one. <laughs> <laughs> we somehow tricked this fish demon into perhaps giving your town back its water, or at the very least, try to get him to stop harassing everyone? 
Mm. Mm. Is this the way you wish to take? I'd like to see some some justice for this land. Very well. Shall we go see the demon, Malzar? <laughs> I'm only one voice, and I am dissenting, but I'll go if everyone else would like to. What do you think, Lobo? It's a tricky tale. On the one hand, Maybe we could do some good for these people. But on the other hand, plenty of sa other salmon go upstream. Do we need more getting snatched by making wishes they shouldn't be making? Besides, look at them. They look unhappy to you. I think uh, Travatias will look down, uh, committing that particular era <laughs> and and see the like glowing purple river that's not a river but looks something like a river of color beneath him and wonder aloud um if we were to bring the river back would that not just be destroying this new river this new status quo that they've all adjusted to here i do want to talk to mauzahar but I don't want to wish them to change their way of life here. Not if they're happy with it. That's the thing. I don't really know. Admiral, how about you? If, if you could make one wish that was unfettered, what would you wish for? <laughs> would I make a wish? I wouldn't make a wish. I'm quite happy where I am. Me, Cliffside, and the Aurora. <laughs> what would your wish be, Chadwick? Oh, Chadwick becomes very contemplative for a moment, losing some of the energetic uh, exterior that you all are so used to. You know, there was a a child back in in the land of uh, where I come from, and he gave me this this ocarina as a gift. And then when I saw my town become ravaged by acts of war, the child disappeared. I I, I know not if he is alive or dead, but I think. My heart would would appreciate to to know either way, so I think I would wish to to know the whereabouts of this child who is probably not a child anymore. But it's the one thing I I think about often as I play my instruments. I'd rather wish for that than wish for this town to have to change its way of life here. If we had a demon wish. Wow, saying the phrase demon wish makes it seem like a bad idea. Mm. Trav Matthias, what would you wish for if you could have any wish? Oh, um, well, I'm on, a, I'm on a journey. I'm on a pilgrimage. I'm trying to get to a place. Uh, and I don't really know uh, much about it. I don't know what it looks like or where it is or what's going to happen there. But uh, I know it by a word, a word that was whispered in my ear by an elk who then ran away and who I never saw again, a luminescent elk. Uh, I search for the place that is associated with the word petrichor. And I don't think I even really know what the word petrichor means, but I say it to people and sometimes they point me in a direction. I don't, I don't wish to be transported to the place, that would be cheating. Um, I would just wish that I have the certainty that I was going to make it there before. Have the certainty that I was going to make it there. To Petrichor. Mm. What would you wish? 
It's a big thing, a wish. I think, I think I would wish that all people, regardless of who they are, could know things. Things they want to know, things they're curious about. Like the meaning of petrichor. <laughs> that no one would keep that from them. That's what I'd wish. <sighs> Lobo? What would I wish for? I know it's odd. There are so many things that uh, I think I would like very much. But oddly enough, I don't think I'd ever wish for it. These journeys, they shape us. They teach us. They show us. They showed us what destruction can bring, like in our old home. They show us there are less petty things to fight for than land and property, but rather the people. Most importantly, those experiences teach us to be better. So I guess, um, the only thing I wish for is to be able to show what better is. Maybe we can all be a little better at it. Chadwick has slightly sobered up from the uh, conversation and is now uh, being uncharacteristically serious um, as he peers over the Aurora. Perhaps wishing isn't the right way to go if it, if it makes everyone in the end feel incomplete. They didn't go on their full life's journey. But perhaps instead of wishing, maybe we could, Admiral, see Malzahar and, and perhaps understand, understand him as a, a river lord, a river demon. Could we, could we at least catch a glimpse of him? <clears throat> I mean, I was following the conversation, and it seemed like we really wanted to talk with him. So I was already starting to careen this down while the over. Wait, what? Oh, oh. You look over, and the, like, the treetops are right underneath the Aurora. Um, the, the, uh, if this ship um, um, decides to be less airborne, it's, it'll be fine, right? <laughs> oh, my boy. You are, we're looking at the... Admiral of the 22nd Company of the Snow Division. <laughs> you are in good wings. Sidebar. <laughs> we have hands. <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> are we going red wall rules where it's just whatever you imagine? You know what? He's got one foot on <laughs> and the other one is perched on a nice solid beam that he is holding himself up oh, on. Oh, I love mm. it. Mm -hmm. The perch? Yep, just one on the perch and then the other one just like, yeah, this is fine. <laughs> Gorgeous. The Commander Riker school of that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Allow me to mount this chair yes. in no way. <laughs> 
But yes, you all descend, or you are now floating right above the trees. Mm -hmm. And as you are getting closer to the central portion of the swirling water, it in itself is also iridescent, mm -hmm. kind of gleaming up into those floating black rocks that you saw before. And all of these purple trees are essentially leading you upstream mm -hmm. towards the center point. Snowbeak finds a nice clearing, lands the aurora, mm -hmm. lowers down the gangplank. Well, uh, I'll stay here and watch the aurora, but if you wish to go speak with Malzahar, it is just beyond these trees. Lead the way. Chadwick hesitates. I know this is something I've wanted for, for years, but now that there's a possibility of it happening, but there's also a possibility of, of there being trickery and, and some ill effect. No, I, I, I don't think I'll ask, but I will take a peek and see what this Malzahar is all about. So I, I guess we should embark, start walking through these colorful trees to the whirlpool. <laughs> mm -hmm. You break through the line and you can see small streams all leading towards the central point. Mm -hmm. And it is about mm, 20 feet, 30 feet in diameter of this swirling water. You can look up and see its iridescent glow reflecting up into the rocks that are counterclockwise. <laughs> <laughs> Rolling in a motion that is opposite to the whirlpool that is going clockwise. You stand at the edge of this pool, and do you look with it? Up over. Together? I think together, yeah. We all look in together. You all look in together. And as the water swirls, you watch as its motion begins to slow, and still, the water that was streaming in fades. A dark shape, deep below the water, slowly begins to emerge before pressing up and breaking the water surface. Massive whiskers, big eyes that are separated by 10 feet or so, a massive fin, you see this giant black catfish with a white underbelly that streams down into the water. Its eyes are focused not on you, but out, because it's a catfish. <laughs> <laughs> it can't look at you. <laughs> and it just, by presence, seems to be staring at you. You can feel it. Water continues to drip down its body. A little shiver. <laughs> a little wave. You make a little wave. How does one address a demon catfish? I don't know. I'm gonna take out a book and like look <laughs> through it. Meanwhile, you two. I just do kind of a you know courteous bow. You see its giant form. Just do a little. The water starts to pool up before sliding back down. <laughs> I reach into my basket of costumes once more, and I pull out almost what would be like a <laughs> priestly <laughs> looking outfit. <laughs> <laughs> we must be of uh, the most respect for this creature. We don't know what their intentions could be. It also says, watch your words. Mm -hmm. Oh, watch your words. Yes, try to avoid using that W word at any point in time. Oh, yes, right. Don't, don't, don't say the, mm. <clears throat> yes, mm -hmm. quite right. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Mal Sahar. Hello. Why do you speak so slowly? I don't know. 
<laughs> That's better. <laughs> As you can see, I was making fun of you. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, and welcome to my pool. Mm. How can I help you? Oh, he seems so friendly. Indeed. Mm. Chadwick, you wanted to say hello. <laughs> hello. Hello. I'll be brave. I'll, I'll just ask it, what we're all thinking. Why did you trick this poor town? Why, what do you have against these, these lovely local Western people? Blink, blink, <laughs> blink, blink. Hmm. <laughs> ah, yes. That was a decade ago. It's been a while since I've resurfaced. But then again, it's been a while since someone has come to speak with me. Hmm. Well... I took his request, and I saw what was happening out in the world, and I thought, well, this is my river. I should keep it safe. And by his invitation, I did so. Yep. So you weren't, you weren't being cruel at all. You were just doing what you thought was best for the river. Yeah. Yes, indeed. And when that fish came to you, was that a literal story with the fish going up the river, or was that a metaphor? I don't know. It's been a metaphor in the East, but I guess it could be literal here. You weren't being cruel to that fish either. You just gave him everything he wanted. You didn't send the bear after him or anything. No, and that wasn't me. That was my cousin, Lenny. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Lenny and Balthazar. <laughs> As you can see, we have very different naming conventions, <laughs> even in the demon world. I understand some people have old family names and other people are named Mausahar. <laughs> yes, you know, my parents wanted me to have class. <laughs> and class you have, sir. Thank you. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Okay. <laughs> Is that all you came to ask? Mausahar. Malzahar, what do you do with your days here in this, in this whirlpool by yourself? Oh, by myself. Well, in this whirlpool, I sit, I meditate, and I contemplate the world, which is the same as meditation. <laughs> Balzahar, it's the, um, I don't know if you know, because I don't know how time passes in your whirlpool. Um, it's the Festival of Remembrance today. Um, I know that you're sort of tied down here, but is there anything you'd like us to um, drop for you? Anyone who you'd want to remember? Ah, yes. One moment. <laughs> The water resettles, begins to swirl once more, after a time, passes and passes. The whirlpool stills once more, Malzahar reemerges, and along his whisker, he holds out just a lump of wet earth. Well, that smells nice. This is from my den below. I'll make sure that this gets dropped for you. Thank you. I don't engage often in land customs, but I find this one to be fascinating because they used to drop it within the river and it has been much time since I have seen some of the artifacts that they have dropped. Any 
further questions for Malthazar. Any wishes? Mm. Actually, I'd rather, I would like to ask you something. Yes. Leans in. If there was one thing in the world you ever wanted, what would it be? to meditate on that. Take all the time you need. Very well. Thank you for speaking to me. It has been many years. Are you sure you don't want any wishes? Oh, no, oh, no, no wishes here. Oh, thank, thank you so very much. Yeah. 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 You see their eyes glow. <laughs> I can provide wishes. I think we're all right on uh, wishes. I appreciate your time. Yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of salmon, to be honest. Oh. <laughs> yes. It's a good story. And true. <laughs> <laughs> Before the water begins to swirl and Going against nature, that streams begin to stretch outwards and into the woods, iridescent, leading outward. Jodwick, do you feel you got your answer? Yes, I guess he's a benevolent creature after all. Not what I was expecting, but I'm glad we didn't make any wishes. I, I wouldn't feel right. We managed to get ourselves a story uh, without having to lose anything, and I think that's a good day. I think so too. <laughs> I am curious about what he would wish for. That was a good question. That's the thing. Sometimes you spend so much time trying to appease everyone else, you never think about what you want. Perhaps we should return for his answer at some point. A good reason, one of many good reasons to come back to this place. <laughs> Cliffside. Cliffside. <laughs> Shall we rejoin the festival? I think so. Lead on. And I shall. Mm -hmm. And you all, with confidence, make your way back to the Aurora. You ride up very smoothly with Admiral Snowbeak. You see people beginning to light little fires aboard their ships to signify where they're at. And you can see slowly small objects beginning to get tossed over as the Day of Remembrance is slowly coming to a close. What do you all do with the things that you hold? Well, I hold up Alex. <laughs> <laughs> totally not like Lion King. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you're ready to let go, you let go. But only when you're ready. And they find purchase on the railing as you're holding them up steady. And they look over. You see them very focused on the pot of their mother and father. Gives it a few beats before sending it over. And you watch as it tumbles before fading into the darkness. Just remember, this isn't saying goodbye to them. It's just making sure that they come by every now and again. And you can see the tears starting to well in their eyes before they just place their fuzzy head and their oversized hat into your chest. <laughs> you too, kiddo. You too. Mm -hmm. 
I'll take my weird lump um, toward the edge. Trav, would you like to join me? Trav will kind of come up uh, and just put a hand on it with you. It's yours to throw, but Trav is just giving a little bit of extra like support on the side. Hmm. <sighs> Take a moment of com- contemplation and. To friendships faded, and friendships beginning, and friendships maintained. I'll toss it over. <laughs> and to perhaps the most unusual friendships of all <laughs> for Mauzahar, for Lenny, and uh, perhaps for Petrichor. Slorp. Slorp. <laughs> <laughs> and you watch as it falls, and you can just see as it, right before it pierces the tree line, a almost like a teardrop of an iridescent stone just goes into the darkness. Chadwick picks up the little paw print totem. Seems like such a waste to just throw them overboard. I mean, but then he understands what it is about remembrance. So with this paw, I'll remember the lands that I stepped on before I came here, and I'll remember that child from my land, and and all those that were lost in the raid. Drop it over. And as you watch it fall and see the rest of the pottery and offerings fall, night has fully taken the sky, lights twinkling, reflecting almost. The iridescent glow from below with that above. And that is where we're going to end today's episode of Wander Home. Oh, so precious. <laughs> oh, my heart. <laughs> we'll be back with Wander Home next week with a few new guests. Again, thank you all so much for joining us. Sam, Cal, thank you for joining us over here. You're welcome. Yeah, what? Well, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you for, for being here. Oh, thanks for having us. Yeah, and uh, if tell the folks at home if there's anything you would like to tell them. Um, no. Is there something I'm supposed <laughs> to tell them? No, 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 no. I've got nothing to tell you. Thanks for be- watching <laughs> us be sad and lovely for a couple of hours. Thanks for watching us be cool animals doing cool things, and be sure to check out all of the other shows that happen on the channel. They're really cool. Oh, and play Zebas. It's a really interesting game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, and do the social media thing where you leave a comment in the below thing because <laughs> algorithms. And over on this side. <laughs> thank you for ha- thank you for watching us and oh, uh, just if you're feeling like you just need a little bit of warmth, give this game a try. This is mm-hmm. mm. it's like a cup of hot cocoa by a fire. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it sounds like a cup of hot cocoa by the fire. <laughs> <It's too bad. laughs> mm-hmm. Thank you for having us. Super fun. <laughs> right, and thank you all so much for joining us. As was said, please hit the subscribe button. And if you would like to support us further, please check us out at patreon.com slash Until next time, folks, have a great night.